Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 reading to verse 10 can we read together one to go let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal to God but made himself of no look at that he stripped himself of his position in God so that he can obey God and he took upon him the form of a, a servant and was made in the likeness of what yeah wow and being found in the fashion as a man he what he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore god did what highly exalted him and gave him a name which is above every other name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things in earth of things under the earth look at look at that power and for every tongue to confess that jesus is lord when you're humiliated you feel your pride has been what has been bruised but how about if you don't have any pride to bruise how about if you've been emptied of pride and then humiliation will not bite you insult will not bite you die to yourself i've realized that the most humble person is a dead man a dead man is a humble person a dead man cannot if you slap a dead man a dead man will not be able to slap you back a dead man will not talk back if i let me tell you you cannot convert a person and keep them in the faith if you're proud you'll make them backslide again because people whom you are going to convert to god don't have a full understanding and sometimes they will challenge you sometimes they will resist you sometimes they will bite the finger that fed them jesus is a good example of what it takes to be humble and to be powerful doing so the people he came to save put him on the cross that's why the hymn writer says when i survey when i examine the cross my riches gain i will count it but loss because i don't have there's no rich there's nothing for me to boast when i look at the cross i see my humiliation i see love that i cannot understand this is a man who is innocent he came down to take my place you see people he came to save we are hauling insults at him spitting at him and he didn't open his mouth to retaliate he didn't open his mouth to say god cancel salvation cancel the plan of salvation i'm coming back these people don't merit salvation he didn't react he didn't retaliate retaliation comes from a life that is not humble the part of the cross is a very humbling part if you want to be a christian and a christian indeed you must walk this humility part humility is called soft power and soft power is is powerful what is humility i've said that humility is best described as a state of mind that says the other person is better than me if you have any doubt in your mind <laughs> If you have any iota of doubt in your mind that because of one thing that you have or the other that you are better than another person, you've missed it. And the spirit of humility can't rest in you. If you're thinking because of your height, because of your dressing, because of your money, because of the houses you have, your accomplishments, and you, you allow that to blow you up a little bit above another person, you are proud. And the Bible says that pride go ahead before a fall but to the contrary humility go ahead before he that will rise the school of humility the school of patience these are schools that every child of god must attend my prayer for you is that as you attend this one you will allow it to reign in your spirit in the name of jesus christ it's a state of lowliness and uh, we said that meekness is the senior brother of uh, humility humility is carrying that mind meekness is practicing it a proud person is a weak person humility makes you strong pride makes you weak the trinity 
God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is one of the greatest examples of humility and power. They are all equal. Three in one and one in three. A mystery. Equal, but there is hierarchy. How can, how can there be equality and hierarchy and order? It doesn't follow. But the Trinity is designed to release power because the second person in the Trinity, who is the Son, Jesus Christ, says, Okay, I am equal to you, Father, it's God, but you become my Father. I come a little lower. And then the third person in Trinity, the Holy Ghost, says, I am equal to you, Father, I am equal to you, uh, the Son, but I decide to subdue myself. And so that's why in our human mind, we always have in our mind that God the Father is senior. Jesus is second. Holy Ghost is. And in that manner, they release power. They rule the universe. I went to preach at, in a Catholic family. And after sharing the word of God, the lady asked me, said, you, you people who are Pentecostals, you always, you know, you pray in the Holy Ghost. You pray in the Holy You wake up, you say, good morning, Holy Spirit. You keep praying, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Does the Father not get jealous? So I said, no, no, no. <laughs> the Father does not get jealous because when the Holy Ghost is greeted, the Father is greeted. That is why as a Holy Ghost filled Christian, you can talk, talk about the Holy Ghost only all your life. Because whatever you do to the Holy Ghost, you've done to the Father, you've done to the Son. This is what Satan did not understand. You go down to the earth and die so that you can save man. Jesus didn't turn around to the Father and say to the Father, how dare you send me? I make war to you. We are, we are co-regents. You go down. I will not go down. No. Jesus humbled himself. That's what the Bible says. And he came down not just to be a man. What an insult. You take God and you put God in the body of a man. And then you sent him to go and die. To be crucified by the people he created. What you created. Rising to fight you. How does it make you feel? But that's what Jesus endured for us. The people he created slapped him and spat on his face. Insulted him. And yet, he just remained there calm like ice water. That's humility. Are you a meek person? Are you a humble person? The power that Jesus commands is simply because of his humility. Not insisting on his right. Not insisting on his position. I pray for you that the Lord will give you this grace in the name of Jesus Christ. So that is where we are. Humility has power. Humility is painful, but it has power. If you are willing to be humiliated for Christ, you will reign. You will rule. Pride acts in foolishness. And after you have exploded, then you sit down to count the cost. And realize that you've lost all. The Bible says, he that ruleth his spirit is better than he that taketh the city. When I see sisters who quarrel a lot with other sisters, it's simply because one person does not want to let go. You want to fight back. You want the other party to know that you are not weak. You are strong. You have the right. I have the right to retaliate. I have the right to pay her back. Humiliation for humiliation. But I chose not to. It's going to affect my pride. It's going to pain me. It's going to make me look weak. So what does it take me to lose my pride and gain one soul? That is the way of a cross. But if you are willing to lose yourself. If you are willing for your rights not to count. You will soon rise above that person. The devil fell. Didn't he? And he's going down below deep deep down below because he sought to get through pride what jesus got by humility everything you get through pride doesn't stay it doesn't last anything that gives you this advantage to to oppress others that thing is immediately marked for demolition it's marked for destruction that's why i say pride go ahead before i fall but God doesn't tell you who will bring the fall. But you can sign on on it. I pray for these younger ones. 
if you begin early to walk in humility, you will see the greatness and the promotion that it brings. There's a man that is called Praying Hyde. Praying Hyde. He used to have a servant that would steal his clothes, steal his watch. Hyde knows that the servant is stealing these things. If, for instance, the man stole a coat, Hyde will go into his wardrobe after the boy has finished cleaning and give him the second coat. <laughs> he steals a shoe. <laughs> Hyde will give him the second shoe. It is his right to take that boy, report him, put him behind the bars. He would have been able to do that. But he realized that that would not break that boy down. He kept doing that, kept doing that, kept doing that until he broke that boy down. And the boy confessed by himself and said, I've been stealing all this from you and yet you don't scold me. Yet you don't report me. This is why people like Judas. Judas was, Judas, Judas was a broken man. Judas was a terribly broken man. Because when he came to Jesus with the Sanhedrin and the soldiers to betray Jesus, he went to Jesus and he said, Master. And he said, Master. And yet Jesus went and hugged him. And tell him that which you want to do, do quickly. I pray for you. May you rise by the power of humility. A humble man fights nobody. Because he's not interested in winning an argument. A humble man is not interested in, in, in winning. Sometimes when you argue with people over things, most arguments end in a quarrel. Yeah, but a Christian... A humble man is not interested in, in, in winning. Sometimes a Christian just lets the other person assume he has won the argument. And you retreat into your shell of humility. Taking, allowing the other man to like, have his way. Temporarily. So that he doesn't draw you into a quarrel. Into, into offense. One of the remarkable graces of a humble man is silence. Silence. A meek man is a humble man. And a humble man is connected to God's blessings. The kind of blessings that humility brings, you don't pray for it. Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall what? Inherit the earth. Through humility, you can reign over material things. Humility will keep you from falling into the trap of the devil. The Bible said pride go away before it fall. In other words, pride will bring temptation. Always temptation. The devil likes people who advertise themselves. People who promote themselves. People who are humble are hidden and quiet. Humility protects and keeps you from harm. Humility, it keeps you free from what? Offense. A humble man fights nobody. Because he's not interested in winning an argument. A humble man is not interested in, in, in winning. He's free of friction. Competition. I'm not competing with anybody. Are you following me? I don't have any competitor. Competition doesn't move me. What have you done? This man did this, that man did this, that man did this. I don't like to hear those things. Because they draw you out. They make you not to progress at your own pace. At your own appointed pace. They, they draw you into temptation. They draw you to become careless about life. About your faith. And do things that you would not ordinarily do. To outdo one another. To outshine one another. It's one of the forces of pride. To, to be hailed. These are symptoms of pride. But when you are a humble man, you, don't, you are yourself. You attain, you do your things at the appointed time. And you have peace. You have peace. And you live long. These are the four powerful values. You have power over, over devils. And you have power over your fellow man. Number two, a blessing. You inherit the earth wherever you go. Number three, it keeps you from the trap of the devil.
there are certain temptations that will not come near you. And four, keeps you free from offense. Friction, competition, judgmental spirit keeps you from those things. Now, lastly, before we pray, how do you attain this humility? How do you grow in humility? Or we should be saying, how do you practice meekness? Romans chapter 12. Let me start from verse 2. It says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. Transformation for Christians come by challenging your mind. You need to renew your mind. Many of the mind will carry our traditional minds, cultural minds. will carry race, race-related mindset. Some of us carry idol mindsets, idolatry-related mindsets, self-related mindset. When your mind is not transformed, is not renewed, you can't follow God. God wants us to have the mind of Christ. That's why in Philipp- Philippians he said, let this mind be in you. God wants the mind of Christ to be in us. We should not carry our own mind. He says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according to God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Not to think highly. So, renew your mind. Renew your thinking and your thought life. Let this mind be in you. See your fellow human being as your equal. Rich or poor. White or black. Brown or blue. You cannot look down on anybody. You cannot look down on a sinner. A humble man does not dwell on criticism. He doesn't dwell on fault finding. He dwells on praise. Let this mind be in you. Go and examine your mind. If there is anybody you are thinking that you are better than, better go and, re- better go and repent. Seriously. Better go and repent. Number two, depend always on prayer. Prayer is a sign that you are humble. Lord, show me what to do. Lord, give me understanding. Lord, help me. What are you saying? I cannot help myself. That is humility. Humility is saying God is better than me. God has better resource. God is more in charge. God has more power. So I go to him for my, for my needs in life. That's humility. John chapter 5 verse 9 says, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of him. So, he is not independent. If you can go one whole week without prayer, you are feeding the pride. If you can go one whole week without devotion, meditation, it shows that you are dependent on yourself. If you are independent of God, you are not humble. You do things from week to week, you don't ask God. In prayer, you are not humble. I want to do the will of God. That's humility. Lord, I won't do this unless I hear from you. One week, you didn't do anything. You've been saying, Lord, show me direction. Lord, show me that." Do you know at the end of the day, even when you take that decision, you find that that decision is covered. Because you waited. He said, those that wait upon the Lord will do what? Will renew their strength. Sometimes when God knows you will take the right decision, and you have told him, you've acknowledged him, he will not tell you anything. He will, he will know that at the end of the day, you will, you will do it. So, watch your prayer life. If you can't maintain a consistent prayer life, pride will grow in you. And number three, avoid the evil of I. I, capital I, I, me. Avoid it. Avoid the evil of I. I trained myself. I worked hard. No, 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 no. When you don't acknowledge God, you are headed for a crash. 1 Corinthians 15.10 says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. I will do this. I will do this. No, Christians don't talk like that. 
We say, by his grace. You see, Christians of those days, they say, by his grace. If we see tomorrow, by his grace. You will say, I will see you tomorrow at 12 p.m. Who told you that you will live to see tomorrow? <laughs> if Christ dies, by his special grace, I can do it. In Christian leadership, we don't choose ourselves. He said, no man take care of this honor by himself. But that honor is always bestowed upon the person. Avoid the evil of I. It has destroyed a lot of persons. Nebuchadnezzar said, this great city I built by myself, by my might, by my power. Now what happened to him? He has set up an appointment with pride. Proud person must fall. So God keeps away from them. Yeah, ascribe great credit to God for all the promotions of your life. Yeah, by his special grace, God provided for me like this. God provided for me like that. Talk humility because what you talk, you will become. As a father, as a husband, as a wife, better teach your children the right language. This I, me, is very destructive. Right? Teach them that all we own is God that owns it. We're just custodians. We're just keeping it for God. So, avoid the evil of I. Self-importance, self-promotion, self-advancement. If you avoid it, offenses won't strike you much. Won't pain your heart much. And number three, fast very often. Second Chronicles 7.14 if my people which are called by my name shall in the hebrew that word humble is fast so it says if my people which are called by my name shall fast themselves and pray and then the other promises will follow there fasting is a medication for humility that's why christians are encouraged to live a regular fasted life because when you fast, you starve self. You kill Mr. Self, Mr. I, Mr. Me. You bring them under control. I will show you who I am. I will show you my true colors. Yes. That Christian doesn't live a fasted life. Self has grown wild like a wild grass. But when you fast regularly, you will not know when it humbles you. It brings the spirit of humility inside of you. And lastly, recognize your human agents. God always gives us agents to humble us. Always. Gives us it. Even sometimes, agents, those agents must not be human. Sometimes it can be material things to humble us. Before we pray, Second Corinthians 12, 7. At least I should be exalted above measure. Through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, least I should be exalted above measure. The higher you go, the more tempted to be proud. What did I say? The greater the promotion, the greater the success, the greater the riches, the greater the accomplishment, the more pride will come knocking on the door of your life. And sometimes it's good to allow those who try to bring you down to exist. Don't kill them. Paul wrote almost half of the New Testament. So he was a great man. But he says here, he said there was a messenger, this messenger of Satan. Verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord three times that it might depart from me verse 9 and he said unto me my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in your weakness most gladly therefore i will i rather glory in my infirmities that the power of christ may do what may rest upon me so look at that that the power of christ may rest upon me i want to remain low i don't want to be exalted i want to remain low i don't want to be exalted so that the power of christ will rest upon me 
Every one of us have an agent. Sometimes a sister can be humbled by the church members. Sometimes it's the leadership. You're a leader in a very small group. There is one dissenting voice. That voice in your group is always against you. What are you going to do? Are you going to engineer for the person to be removed? <laughs> are you going to engineer for the person to be removed? I believe that before Satan fell down, Archangel Michael was always correcting him. But he would not listen. Don't stifle the voice of dissent. Sometimes your messenger can be your wife. That will bring you down to size. It can be a friend that will bring you down to size. When people disagree with you, don't get offended. They may be the messenger that will keep you down. So much so that if pride is your problem, you got to pray to God and say, please send me that messenger also. So that he can humble me. Bow down your head. Are you blessed this morning? Is the word of God light unto you this morning? Do you have understanding this morning? If you do, lift up your voice and let us talk to God. This is what Christianity is all about. The life of Christ.